Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. In this tutorial, we're going to look at Sargent's theory of location. We've previously looked at Weber's theory of industrial location in this channel. Now, Weber's theory links offices to factories and gauges how this can affect profitability and lead to a competitive advantage. Sergeant Florence, on the other hand, outlined that geographical location and distance are not as important as the distribution of population in a location. He essentially highlighted the importance of statistical population data over distance and geography when it comes to uh, organizations gaining a competitive advantage. Sargent uh, forced his theory based on an inductive analysis. Okay, now this basically means that he started off with observations leading to studying patterns and then to formulating his hypothesis based on actual statistical data. Uh, it can be used to gauge what types of industries can thrive in a particular region and what would not. Uh, that is one of the primary uses of the sergeant's theory of location. From an organization's point of view, they can use this theory when thinking of expanding into a particular region. Uh, but at the same time, it's also important for governments to ensure that industries th thrive and expand uh, and are extremely profitable. So it's, in, it's also in their interest to ensure that industries uh, take care of their own expansion plans in the right way. Okay, so it's important for a lot of stakeholders, as you see, to understand where to expand different industries and how. Now let's look at the key concepts in the theory. So what are the components of this uh, theory of location? After looking into statistical data, uh, Sargent came up with two different concepts, two unique new concepts, location factor and coefficient of localization. Now let's elaborate on uh, each of these factors and look at how we actually calculate these factors, okay? Uh, location factor. Location factor can be used to, to understand how centralized or decentralized an industry is in a region. So it is specific to a region. It is a measure of how concentrated the industry in question is in that particular region in comparison to how concentrated it is in the entire country. We'll look at how we calculate uh, this shortly. There is a specific formula used to calculate location factor. Uh, but in terms of its interpretation, if the location factor for industry in a region is greater than one, the industry tends to be centralized. Uh, this means that there is a higher pressure, uh, sorry, presence of the industry in the region compared to the average presence in the entire country. If the value is less than one, the industry tends to be decentralized and has a lesser presence in the region as compared to the presence in the country. And if the value is exactly one, the industry is neither centralized nor decentralized. Now, how do we get to this value? So the location factor L will be equal to the percentage of workers in an industry uh, and also in an area divided by the ratio of the total number of workers from any industry engaged in an area and the total number of workers from any industry in the whole country. Okay, now let's, let's assign a character to each factor here. Uh, and then let's look at an example. Let's firstly uh, put the formula together. So let A be the total number of workers of a particular industry in a particular area. Uh, B be the total number of workers of that particular industry in the whole country. C will be the total number of workers of any industry but in that particular area and D is the total number of workers from 
any industry in the entire country. So what we have to do is we firstly have to take A divided by B into 100 to get the percentage of workers in our industry in our area. And let's assume this number to be X. So location factor will be X divided by C divided by D into 100. Okay, now let's assume our industry to be oil refining and let's look at an example. Let's say we have A to be 500, B to be 10,000, C to be 65,000 and D to be 150,000. And what do we actually get if we put all of those uh, numbers into our calculation? We actually get 5 divided by 65,000 by 150,000 into 100. And the value comes out to be 0 0.115. So this indicates that based on our numbers, based on the, the numbers that were provided to us, the industry in question is not centralized in the area that we chose and it doesn't have an above average presence of workers or the workforce. Okay, now the next concept uh, in sergeant's theory is the coefficient of localization. Now a lot of people get confused between uh, the two quotients or the two coefficients uh, that uh, or two factors that we're looking at in this uh, uh, in the theory. So the coefficient of localization uh, refers to a tendency okay also called a propensity so while the location factor refers to uh, the actual the actual concentration of an industry in a specific area the coefficient of localization refers to the tendency of an industry to get concentrated anywhere in the country so it actually kind of defines the character or the tendency of the industry it gives us an indication of how centralized or decentralized an industry can be uh, in the entire country. It is therefore a single figure for an industry on the whole. So to calculate coefficient of localization, you have to take uh, the percentage of all workers found in each region, the percentage of workers in the industry in question in each region. Now, some regions, as, as you would imagine, will have uh, this number higher than the others, okay? Uh, and for some, for certain places, B will be higher than A. So the percentage of workers in the industry uh, in question in each region will actually be higher than the per percentage of workers found in each region, okay? So as a, as a comparison, B could be higher than A for certain industries. Uh, and all of these positive deviations for each area, positive deviations or increments, basically, from B to A are then added together. And this number is then divided by 100 to give us an overall number. So that is how you actually calculate uh, the coefficient of localization. And uh, the more areas you have... The, uh, the more complicated the calculation becomes. But that is the basis of how we actually uh, calculate the coefficient of localization. And how do we interpret this data? Uh, if the value of this number is zero, the industry will tend to be perfectly evenly distributed. Uh, and if the coefficient of localization is exactly one, the industry uh, tends to be decentralized in some areas. Okay, and based on the value of the coefficient of localization, industries are classified then as high coefficient industries, medium coefficient industries, and low coefficient industries. This is one of the reasons why uh, the coefficient of localization is calculated, so that we can actually categorize uh, industries based on you know where they rank up in the calculation, uh, and what what would a high coefficient of localization uh, industry look like? So examples of high coefficient industries can be oil refineries, which uh, will only be based in certain regions. It cannot be based everywhere in the country. 
industries like paper manufacturing or cement manufacturing or rubber manufacturing tend to have low coefficients as they can actually be based anywhere. You don't need to uh, have very specific locations. Uh, so these are essentially the two primary components of uh, Sargent's theory of uh, location. Uh, the, 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 the coefficient of localization uh, being a single number you have to you have to understand this uh, there is a clear difference between the uh, the location factor and the coefficient of localization and these two form the pillars on which Sargent's theory lies now obviously there were a lot of criticisms for Weber's theory and just like Weber Sargent's theory also drew its fair share of criticisms the most prominent criticism uh, for Sargent's theory uh, is that it only helps in figuring out the current state of distribution of industries. It doesn't elaborate on the causes of such a distribution. I mean, what are the actual reasons why certain industries are more concentrated in certain areas? It also doesn't take into consideration any factors other than the concentration of workers. There could very well be other factors which can positively or negatively affect the presence of an industry in an area. There could be regional factors. There could there could actually be geographical factors. Uh, the theory only helps us in understanding location dynamics within a country and not on an international basis. Uh, the coefficient of localization would obviously be different for different countries because it spans across the whole country so it'll have to be recalculated for, for for every different country for each country so a comparison cannot be made and the the theory cannot be as applicable in the international markets as uh, it would be in the markets that you started with okay so these are the primary criticisms and that's uh, draws out that brings us to the conclusion to this uh, tutorial I thank you very much for your attendance as always and as always please uh, like this tutorial please support this channel please subscribe and uh, and get your family your friends and everybody that you know to subscribe to this channel and there will be more content coming up very soon and please do use the comment section to recommend any topics of your choice Thank you very much. Bye-bye.